day follows night, night follows day, and like a block of ice relentlessly melting in the sun, similarly the seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years of our lives in this world are slipping away. This world is unique. You sit in a car, you press the accelerator, the car goes forward. Aeroplane moves forward, the ship moves forward, anything. Any vessel, you apply energy, its movement is forward. Yet time is that vessel which is receding, it's not moving forward. Hassan Basri Rahimullah explains this in the following manner. He says, Al mawtu ma'kudun bi nawasikum, wa dunya tutwa bi waraikum. He says, Mort and death has caught you by your forelock, it's in front of you. And your life, this dunya, this world, Tutwami Waraikum is being wrapped up behind you. Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu exhorts us, encourages us, that ponder, reflect over this. Afala taroon, afala taroon ila layli wa nahar, yubliyani kulla jadeed. He says, why don't you observe? The movement of day and night, can you stop it? Can you halt it? What is happening? Every new thing is made old. Every distant, it seems, the child was born. Parents were envisaging in their mind's eye, imagining, postulating. The day my son will graduate, the day my child will get married, the day this and this milestone will be achieved. How quickly the time passes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, sorry about the painful interjection, but um, not everyone that's parked in the back is planning on staying. So please, if you double park, if you know you've stopped someone, there's a lot of brothers that are outside waiting to leave. So please, brothers, if you double park, if you're not sure, go and check up on your car. I lost my car in the room. That which seemed a long way away has already come to pass. Every distant thing is brought near. And every promise of Allah, every promise of Allah is made a reality. What promise? Allah says in the Quran, وَلَكُمْ مِعَادُ يَوْمٍ وَلَكُمْ مِعَادُ يَوْمٍ لَا تَسْتَأْخِرُونَ عَنْهُ سَعَةً The time of mort, the time of death, Interestingly, if you observe in Quran, when Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to mort and death, the analogy Quran uses is the word or expression yaqeen, absolute certainty. Throughout the ages there have been sections of humanity that have refused to believe in the risalat of the Nabi of that time. There have been sections of humanity that refused to bring iman and conviction in Allah. Atheists, agnostics, they deny the existence of a creator. There have even been sections of humanity that purported the idea that this world doesn't exist. Everything is going on in the mind. But there has never been a group that has denied the existence of more than death. Allah says, Wa'bud Rabbaka hatta yaktiyaka al-yaqeen. Worship your Rabb. Worship Allah until yaqeen comes. What is yaqeen? Absolute certainty, you cannot be denied. Worship your Allah until your death comes. Once when Janazah was going past, someone asked Abu Darda Allahu Ta'ala, and whose Janazah is that? He said, Brother, that is your Janazah. And if you don't like what I am saying, he says, Inna ka mayyitun wa inna hum mayyitun. Verily, you, my beloved, will die, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and every one of them will die. That Allah who created this universe, before He created it already, 
decided its destruction. وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا سَعِيدًا جُلُزًا Allah decided, determined the destruction of this entire universe prior to its creation. Everything around us is ephemeral. Everything around us is temporary. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Allah says everything is temporary. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ One reality will remain and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of us is on a journey, an unstoppable journey, an inexorable journey. We are heading towards a point, one point, that day when we will have to stand in front of Allah. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكْ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا Allah will come, Malaika will be lined up. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Jannat will be brought near. وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِلْغَاوِينَ Jahannam will be brought near. وَنَظَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِرْسُ مِنْ لَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلْ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ Allah says we will set up the scales of justice. Justice is not what is meted out in the courts of this world, where generally the principle is those who are strong and wealthy usurp the rights of those that are weak or do not have material means. That justice, those scales of justice are such, Allah says, فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْعًا There will be no zulm. There will be no oppression. True justice. That day the announcement will be made. وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ This is such an announcement. Such a call that will occur. That even great, great awliya of Allah and friends of Allah, their knees will start shaking at this announcement. In this world, in this world, the one who paraded openly and nakedly in public, and the one whose body was covered with the cloak of haya and shame, they walked together. In this world, the one for whom liquor ran like water, and the one who they walked together. In this world, the one who got up in the dead of night and cried before Allah and Musallah, and the one whose nights were spent in the dens of vice and amusement and masiyat and sinning against Allah. In this world, they walked together. In this world, the one who went hungry but did not usurp the rights of anyone and the one who filled his coffers at the expense of the rights of those he came into contact with, in this world, they walk together. But a day is coming. The respected brothers and sisters, a day is coming. Quran tells us. This Arabic word for day is yom. How many places in the Quran? Allah reminds us yom. Yom al يوم البوار يوم الجنة يوم النار يوم الحسرة يوم الندامة يوم القيامة يوم التغامل يوم الحاقة يوم الطامة الكبرى يوم الفوز يوم الخسران يوم يأتي لا تكلم نفس إلا بإذنك وَخَشَعَتِ الْأَصْوَاتِ فَلَا تَسْمَعُ إِلَّا حَمْسَ There will be total, complete silence. يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ الرُّسُلُ How many places in the Qur'an Allah says, Yo, 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 a day is coming, a day is coming, a day is coming. How big your bank balance is in this world? How many of your worldly pursuits and desires you achieve? How many of the goals and aspirations of this life that you set up for yourself did in fact materialize or not? Wallah! On that day will come for nothing. That is the day of justice. That is the day of reality. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّا وَتَرَدْتُمْ مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ وَرَاءَ ذُهُورِكُمْ خُفَاتًا عُرَاتًا غُرْلًا لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ عَدَّا وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا Each one alone. You'll have to leave behind whatever you have 
of the master of this world. Each one alone would be brought and made to stand in front of Allah. We are worried. We are worried about social status. We are worried about worldly amenities. We are worried about worldly aspirations fulfilled or not fulfilled. How many of us does a frown line come on the forehead in the preparation of that day? Majority of us 
are in a state of denial. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us. He said, visit the graveyard. I don't know what the custom in Australia is. But in South Africa, many, many graveyards, you find a small plaque in front of that grave. The name of the person, the date that they passed away. Maybe some brother, some sister, some parent, some relative. Stand in front of that grave and look at that date. 2013, 2010, 2007, 2005. How quickly has the time not passed? Other day, one of our ulama, one of our elders from Raivin, he was making one janaza. He was in the Kabrastan. So after the janaza was completed, he asked one youngster whose father had passed away recently. He said, Take me to the grave of your father, I can pray. So the youngster pointed to one grave, the uncle called out from behind, Hey, bye, brother, that's not your father's grave, your father's grave is that side. How many commands of Allah that father probably broke in order to fulfill the aspirations of that youngster? And yet, where is grave settled and the youngster is not even aware which is my father's grave? Abdullah bin Qurz radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In the majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that famous poem, poem which he recited, one expression, كَأَلَّمْ تَكُنْ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكَ خُلَّتُ وَلَا حُسْنُ مُدِّمْ مَرَدَّةً فِي التَّبَادُلِ That with the passage of time, people get involved in their own lives and so quickly, when the person passed away, we were crying, screaming, lamenting. Few years pass, and it is as if no relationship existed. We get involved with our own children, with our own lives. And we forget the existence of that person, that relationship seems as if it never existed. Stand in front of those graves, look at those days. Five years have passed, six years have passed, seven years have passed. Take the thermometer after that and look within ourselves. Six years have passed, seven years, eight years, nine years. How many more years do I have? How much more time do I have? Time is not an expendable commodity. How many places in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes oath on time, aspects of time. We find that this is a practice in any language. Whether English, French, Italian, any language. That when somebody does what you are saying, that you impress upon that person that no, I'm speaking the truth. Except what I'm telling you, people take oath. They take qasam. Quran, when Allah introduces His Quran, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِي There is absolutely no doubt in this whatsoever. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَلَى لَا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلٌ فَصِلْ وَمَا بِوَاهُ وَبِالْهَزْلِ كِتَابٌ أُحْكِمَتْ آيَاتُهُ ثُمَّ فُصِّلَتْ مِنْ لَدُ الْحَكِيمٍ خَبِيرٍ Absolutely no doubt whatsoever. Woman astaku min Allah hidila. Woman astaku min Allah hadita. There is no one more truthful than Allah. Allah does not need to take qasam or oath. This is Allah's shafqat. Allah's kindness. Allah's compassion. Allah takes oath and qasam in the Quran on aspects of time. Wal fajr. By the oath of the daybreak. Wal subhi idha tanafas. By the oath of the dawn as it takes a breath. Wal layli idha yasr. By the oath of the night as it passes. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى By the oath of the night as its darkness envelopes. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى By the oath of the day as it lights up. وَالْعَصَرِ By the oath of time itself. Not only on aspects of time, but those portents of Allah's creation that bring time into existence. And by وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى By the oath of the sun, by the oath of the moon, by the oath of the stars. All these customs and oaths, why? To conscientize you and I. To wake you and I up to the reality that not only is your dollars and your gold and your silver and your jewelry valuable, but more valuable than that is time. Time is a mata, time is a precious possession. You want to preserve, you want to protect your valuable things, put it in a safe deposit, in safety deposit box. Put it in some bank vault. You want to hide from the tax man?
man your excess cash put in underneath the mattress. You lose some job in this world, you can get another job. Some investment goes off, you can do another investment tomorrow. Lose some money, recover it tomorrow. But where are you going to lock up time? Which safety deposit box are you going to put time into? How are you going to stop that tick, 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 tick of the clock? Khudayb bin Ayaz rahimullah means one person. He asked him, Kama ta'a alaykam in umri, brother, tell me how old are you? He says, Sittu na sana, I'm 60 years of age. He says, Mundu siti diru ila rabbi yushiku an tasir. He says, my brother, for the last 60 years, you are on a journey, on a train of life. Don't you think that the time for you to reach your destination has come here? Is this train going to carry on forever? Aren't you going to reach your destination at some time? Is this not a reality? The youngster stands in front of that mara. He's got his Ray-Bans on. He's got a gold necklace around his neck. He's been pumping iron. Allah knows how long in the gym taking this steroid and that powder and whatever it is. Developing his biceps and his triceps. Looks from this side, looks from that angle, other angle. Admiring himself, cleaning himself. Then the young girl stands in front of the mara. The bloom of her cheeks were compared to the bloom of roses. The twinkling of her eyes to that of stars. She thinks she is the most universe of the day. The Zulekha of the time. Looking from this side, looking from that time. From that side. Just a few moons. Just a few moons. Just a few years will pass. What botox treatment? What cosmetics? What plastic surgery? What facial surgery are you going to use to delay the onset of the ravages of time? That which Allah says, وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Those of you whom we take to an old age, we will bring a reverse in your creation. Afala ta'akilun, why don't you understand this world is temporary? This life is temporary. He's walking on the earth in his mind's eye, he's planning. A 60 foot tall building above the ground. Yet it has already been predetermined before the sun of today will set. He's to go six feet beneath. That function is being planned, that lavish ceremony is being planned. The tailor has been given the order. The suit is being prepared. World class tailoring. Little does he realize that the clock of his kafan has already left the marketplace on his way to his home. The caterers. Contract has been given. And little does he realize that the worms and the insects of the grave are already sharpening their teeth in anticipation of the feast that is to come to them. Is this not the reality of this life? Passing faith, an ephemeral existence. This year I was in Hajj. There were two brothers with me. Both were in the same business. Doctor friend was with them. So conversation started. One was very astute. He had financial prowess. He knew how to make the bucks. The other one not so adept in making money. So this doctor is telling me about these two brothers. He was their friend. He says one has got beauty, the other has got brains. One has got beauty, the other has got intelligence. What is meant by? He's got intelligence, he knows how to make money. He knows how to amass the material wealth of this world. That was his interpretation of the fact that he has got brains. The same question, the same question, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put in front of Sahaba Ikira, Man akyasun nas, Man akyasun nas, who is the most intelligent person? 
Yet who is putting this question? Wahab bin Munabba says, من بدء الدنيا إلى انقضائها من العقل في جنب عقله إلا كحبة رمل بين رمال الدنيا. He said it's the combined عقول and intelligence of every human being from Adam عليه السلام to the last person to come before قيامه had to be pulled together and equated to one grain of sand. The عقل and intelligence of محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم would be all the grains of sand on the surface. That عقل, that intelligence. He poses the question, Man at your sunnahs, who is the most intelligent person? The one who knows how to make money? The one who raised whose social status is high? No! Man at your sunnahs! What is the response Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives? Ashadduhum, Akhtaruhum dhikran lil maut, wa ashadduhum istiqadan lahu. He said, it is that person of my ummah who will remember his mort the most. And who will prepare for it the most? The one who remembers death and prepares for it the most, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, These are the intelligent ones. Allah will give them dunya, Allah will give them akhirah. This reality has to dawn upon us. This is a passing phase. Unfortunately, the movement of time are acknowledged. And I realized, instead of becoming a source of ibrat, instead of becoming a wake-up call for us, have in fact become a cause of celebration. Like the poet says, Inna lanafrahu bil ayyami naqtahuha Inna lanafrahu bil ayyami naqtahuha Wa kulla yawmin mada yudni min al-ajali Fa'mal li nafsika qabla al-mawti mujtahidan فإنما الربح والخسران في العمل نجدد سرورا بالهلال إذا بدا وما هي إلا السيف بالحتف ينتظي إذا تم العام فهي كناية وترجمة عن شطر عمر قد انقضى He says foolish insan You are celebrating the passage of time Birthday What do you do you celebrate? New year There's a euphoric atmosphere around us Annual vacation, as if it's compulsory. End of year party, new year party. And these activities generally are linked with what? With Masya. With the disobedience of Allah. What are we acknowledging? What are we celebrating? Have we gained something? Gained another year? We are not gaining time, we are losing. Someone says he has a party. Why are you celebrating? He says, I lost hundred thousand dollars. He says, you lost your marbles. What are you celebrating? A few years ago, I went to one relative's house. He had just come from a party. I said, whose party? He says, my friend's birthday party. How old is was your friend? He says, 60 years of age. I'm not making this up. He says, 60 years of age. I'm still celebrating. One wonders how you're going to put 60 candles on the cake. And then a 60 year old man's respiratory system, when he tries to blow out the candles, whether he'll get blown out first or the candles will get blown out, that also is out. Yet what are we doing? Still celebrating. Hours and hours in front of the shaitan box, father, mother, children, looking at Zina taking place. Hazan called out. There'll be that small percentage that will leave that and come to the masjid to finish the salah quickly to go back. To go back into, into that environment. Environment of behayai, environment of shamelessness. Hours and hours looking at people chasing behind some object of vain amusement. Results are already bought up beforehand. Walk in the masjid, look at our youngsters. What are we advertising? This sports personality, that movie star. T-shirts emblazoned with their names. Ah! What a money-making exercise for someone else. Individuals who every day is in Shah and every night is in Zina are being idolized. And that Nabi who finished himself for us. That Nabi who tied stones to his stomach for us. That Nabi who night upon night cried before Allah for us. Where is the link with him? Where is the 
down in South Africa, it was Ramadan. That time, I think they call it UEFA, some UEFA league was taking place. I went to one brother and I said, Bye, Inshallah, after Isha Salah, after Tarawih, there will be a program in the masjid. First question, how long? There we become very time conscious. When it's Dini talk, very time conscious. Then we're looking at the clock. So there's an expression I was telling somebody earlier today, they say Indian time. You know what's Indian time? They say once in Bombay station, people are celebrating. I asked them, why are you celebrating? They say the 11 o'clock train from the street came at 11 o'clock. <laughs> so everybody was celebrating. Somebody made a little bit of and they found out this was yesterday's 11 o'clock train. Today. <laughs> That's Indian time. But when it comes to the talks of things, we are very conscious of time. I told the brother, why there will be Bayan after Isha, he says, how long? I said, don't worry, it won't be as long as a football match. Football match, you want extra time. Here, there won't be extra time. Very, very, as if this is an expendable commodity. And we ponder and reflected, what is the value of time? What price tag are we going to put? Each breath of air, each hour, each sigh. How many countless systems has Allah not put in? in order to enable you and I to take that one breath. That one second, that one extension, that one allowance. How many systems of Allah are not in place for that? The average human being, they say, breathes in and out 20,000 times a day. 20 now, subconsciously we are breathing in and out, plus minus. One day take a tasbih and check. 20,000 of oxygen, which is pure. And what is our contribution? We breathe out carbon dioxide, which is impure. We take in something pure and we give off something that is poison. Average human being breathes in approximately 8,000 liters of oxygen every day. Imagine if we were built for this. We had to pay 8,000 liters of oxygen, where are we going to pay for? Plus minus 7 billion human beings on the surface of this earth. Each one is breathing in, taking out of the atmosphere 8,000 liters of oxygen every day. Yet, the level of oxygen remains constant 21%. Where's the regulator? Where's the funnel? Where's the pipe? Where's the measurement room? If it had to rise up 2% to 23%, it is said the number of accidental fires would increase 700 times. Another 2% to 25%, besides the North Pole and the South Pole, everything in between would be burned to ashes. Constant 21%! Because this is the requirement. This insan, this human being requires that. So look at the system Allah has put into place. It is said, if the light or the energy of the sun had to be divided into 200 million parts, one part is reaching the earth the ozone layer. And what does it do? It strikes the leaves of the trees. Those tiny, tiny leaves. What is their color? Green. If you look at the sand, the sand is brown. Water is colorless, the trunk is brown. How does that leaf become green? It needs to be green to carry out the function and task which Allah has created. Inside each leaf, there is a chemical laboratory to replicate the function that that laboratory is carrying out, you will need a laboratory that will cost millions of dollars. What is that leaf doing? Through a process of photosynthesis, it is converting the sunlight into oxygen. Replacing the oxygen that you and I are taking out of the atmosphere. Allah has put every leaf of every tree into the service of the human being. The sun is serving you. The leaves are serving you. This environment is serving you. Alam taro anna Allaha sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa asbab alaykum ni'amahu zahiratan wa batina. Allah invites us in the Quran. Why don't you see? Why don't you reflect? Why don't you ponder? Why don't you realize the manner in which Allah has subjugated everything in the heavens, everything in the earth, put into your service. And the mountains of Allah are raining down upon you. 
Zahira wa batina. Those that are apparent, those that are hidden. So many bounties, so many favors that Allah challenges you. Wa in ka'uddu ni'matallahi la tuhsuha. If you have to enumerate, contemplate, ponder, reflect, count the ni'mats and bounties of Allah, you will never do justice. We are breathing in and out. Look at the respiratory system. What is outside? What is internal? What we are tusikum afalatum sirur. Allah invites you, look within yourself. It is said the lungs of a human being are made up of 150 million air sacs. If these lungs are to be opened up, it will fill an entire football field. 50 billion tubes are transporting 10,000 liters of blood every day, a cycle. Where did this intelligence come from? That if you need, that if you want to purify your blood, you need to give it a bath in oxygen. Did our parents tell us, our grandparents? Before the creation, all this was put into place. So that each time, each time you are breathing in, breathing out, that ah, that sigh, that breath is calling out to you, La ilaha illallah. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله إن لهذا الخلق خالق إن لهذا الخلق خالق there is a creator there is a creator it is his plan when is this human being going to acknowledge as Allah put so many balances counterbalances into place so that you say I was whiling away the time I was passing the time frivolous novel, 500, 600 pages by what you're doing, I'm passing away the time. As if that time has no value. As if you're going to get it back. Allah says there is a promised time. When that time comes, there will be no extension. How often we hear this expression, somebody says, I escaped from the jaws of death. I got saved. One minute earlier, one minute later, I will be finished. I got saved. Little do we realize that death did not bear its claws. وَإِذَا الْمَنِيَّةُ أَنْشَبَتْ أَفْقَارَهَا أَلْفَيْتَ كُلَّ تَمِيمَةٍ لَا تَنْفَعُ When mort and death will bear its claws, then nothing, nothing, no system in this world is going to get us an extension. The occasion by which the movement of time are acknowledged, recognized and realized by respected brothers and sisters are not a, not a cause of celebration. Birthday is not a cause of celebration. This is a wake-up call. This is Ibrat. This is Sabah. This is lesson. That one more year has passed. Kulla yawmin mada yudni min al ajali That much closer. That much closer I am born towards the cover. That much closer I am born towards the day when I will have to meet Allah and stand in front of Allah. This is a wake up call for us. We are not an ummah of frivolous pursuits. Look at the culture, look at the heritage, look at the history of Islam. We also have New Year. Our New Year is not January. Our New Year is Muharram. What was the calendar of Islam? We read. A.H. 1437, 1438, 1439. The label we find. A.H. What is A.H.? What does A.H. stand for? After Hijrah. Our calendar started with Hijrah. What is Hijrah? Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ayyul Imani Afdal. Ayyul Imani Afdal. This question was put, what is the height of Iman? What is the pinnacle of Iman? What is the accolade, the height? Al-Hijra. Al-Hijra. Leaving one's home. Leaving that which is beloved to one for the sake of Allah. This verse of the Quran was revealed, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ this word bir in this verse Mufassirin explained kamal e you will never attain the true closeness of Allah you will never attain the true taluk and relationship with Allah until you don't sacrifice for Allah's sake that which is beloved to you 
Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala no he said when this verse was revealed I started looking what is precious to me what is beloved he said I couldn't find anything more beloved to me than Murjana Jariyatun li Rumiya than my slave girl Murjana the Roman princess Arab youth on one side Roman princess on the other side this is like fire and petrol he said, there was nothing more beloved to me than this woman. One verse of the Qur'an, you want Allah? Hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibboon. What does he do? He says, I got her, I freed her, and not just got her. His closest associate was Nafia. He got her married to him. Such was the love that he had for this woman. He said, many years later, the Result of that union, the result of that union, the child that was born, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu would hold that child in his hand and he would breathe in the scent of that child because it reminded him of the pang of love and affection that he had for the mother. But all this sacrifice, one verse of the Quran. You want Allah, come on, Amen, come on, of course. Umar radiallahu ta'ala no, during his Khilafat, a mashura was held. What was the topic of discussion? That the need was felt to establish a calendar, Islamic calendar. Well, well, where must we start? What is that pivotal occasion or incident which will form the basis of our calendar? Sahaba started giving opinions. Someone said, Mawlid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone said Fateh Badr, someone said Fateh Makkah. The birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Milad al-Nabi. Some said conquest of Badr, conquest of Makkah. Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala will remain silent. This was not an ordinary personality. This was that personality in whose mouth Allah the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed his Mubarak saliva. As a result of which, Adama say, يَتَفَجَّرُ الْعِلْمُ مِنْ جَوَانِبِهِ the ulum and knowledge of deen would flow from the limbs of Ali. Hikmat and wisdom would pour from the inner vestiges of his being. Once in Kufa, after Isha Salah, he turned around, started making tafsir of Surah Fatiha. The Azan of Fajr was called out and he hadn't finished the tafsir of the Ba of Bismillah al Rahman. That knowledge Allah blessed him with. So Umar turns to him, Ali, what is your opinion? Where should the calendar start? He said, Al-Hijra. Hijra. Millat Abikum Ibrahim. Allah tells us in the Quran. The Zeen of Islam is Millat of Ibrahim alayhi salam. 4,000 years ago, that Nabi. How many years he cried? More than 60 years of crying. Begging Allah. Rabbi Habli bin as Salihin. Rabbi Habli bin as Salihin. Rabbi Habli bin as Salihin. Allah give me a pious son. Allah give me a pious son. Allah give me a pious son. We are encouraged to make dua, turn to Allah. What we do? Make a little bit dua, then Allah is not answering my dua. Become frustrated. This amal of dua has come out of the woman. Why the conviction is not there? That the maker is Allah, the controller is Allah. The mahwal, qibla, direction of this heart has to become Allah. The mafum of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, every dua, every dua, every dua you make Allah will grant. Until the day, until the day you say that I have made duas and Allah is not accepted. That is the day the door to acceptance will close. Till that point, every dua of Allah is, 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 is granted. Either Allah will give you what you ask for, give you something better, avert some calamity, or Allah will keep as a zakhira and provision for you in the year after whatever you ask for that went unanswered in this world. And when you see that, when you see that, you will wish, you will wish nothing in this world is answered. What is dunya compared to akhirat? Nothing. Such a jannat, such a jannat, such a jannat Allah has prepared.
inna adna adna ahlila okay the short sahaba he said the lowest jannati normally we try to avoid using this word low in relation to jannah but this is the closest translation to this word adna adna ahlil jannati manzila the lowest jannati the last person to enter into jannah in other words this jannah every other jannah is superior to the jannah this person will get this is the lowest the last there is nothing low no lower category than this in jannah the mafhum of the riwayat this person his tiqbal his welcome will be what there will be a carpet laid out normally when they have these posh ceremonies they lay carpet 10 meters 15 they call red carpet ceremony people get carried away they want to be seen walking on the red carpet how long will be the carpet that will be laid out for the last person to enter into jannah 40 years long 40 years long will be the carpet flanked on either side 80000 servants and the dastar khan will be laid out on that dastar khan will be 80000 different types of food but not like the food of dunya function we invite some first they, put, they present a sweet meat dish you know what the custom in australia is but a lot of places they give you something sweet first then the main course biryani or whatever it is is brought first it is one piping hot plate very tasty bring the next plate the host insists to eat eat so eat another plate then they bring another plate what happens start looking for indigestion tablets looking for eno looking for this looking for why heart burn gas burn this problem that problem peptic ulcer or whatever it is that is the, you don't want to see the food There are exceptions. There was one person. He was traveling somewhere. It was late at night. He stopped in a town. The person saw him. Realized it's a strange day. He needs accommodation for the night. He invited him home. He called him to his house. Made him sit in the dasar khan. Fetched a hot roti, bread, placed it in front of him, and went to fetch the curry. By the time he came with the curry, the bread was finished. So he left the curry and went back for more bread. By the time he came back with the bread, the curry was finished. So he left the bread, went back for more curry. By the time he came back with that, the bread was finished. So like Sai Safa Marwa, he's bringing up and down, <laughs> bringing over and over again. And each time, whatever he's bringing, he's getting finished. Eventually, all his food was finished. Finally, this person was satisfied. So then he started a conversation with him. He said, "By the way, why are you going there?" He says, "There's a physician there. I suffer from a, an illness. I'm going for treatment." He says, "What do you suffer from?" He says, "I suffer from lack of appetite." <laughs> He says, "Do me a favor. On your return journey, don't pass through my town. You some other one." Illa mashallah. Generally, how much can a person eat? One is the food of dunya, the other is food of jannah. Eighty thousand different types of food. Yet, we find this expression in the riwayat: "Yajidu fi akhir lukmatim minha ladhatan lam yajid qablaha." You will experience in the eighty thousand morsel that ladhat. that ecstasy which he did not experience before that sachi jannat allah is prepared adatu lil ibad salihin ma ra'ayna ra'at wa la udhun sami'at wa la khatar ala qalbi bashar no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind has imagined whatever dua go on answer in this world will be a zakira and provision Allah will give it to you there in Jannah. At that time, the person will wish not one du'a was answered in this world. Du'a is mukhlul ibadat. It is the essence of ibadat. <coughs> the need, the cry, the call of the hour, with the halat and conditions that are facing this du'a to Allah. Allah ask the forgiveness of Allah. Turn to Allah. Knock the door of Allah. Man dal ladi taani falan ulabihi. Man dal ladi qara ala baabi falan aftahla. Allah said, "Who is there that knocked at my door? The door was not open. Who called out to me and I did not respond? This world is a place of duk, pain, calamity. Generally, if you look at across the board, people are suffering, hardship, difficulty. What is the marham? What is the solace? The person raises his hand and he says, 'Ya Allah, Rabbana, 
Allahumma wallah wallah wallah. Get up in the dead of night. Whatever the problem, whatever the calamity, whatever the look, whatever the pain, raise your hand in the dead of night and say, Ya Allah, more than half the calamity just by that expression is left. That ta'ala for Allah, the relief, halat is there for us to turn to Allah. This is Khalilullah. More than 60 years, Khalilullah is making dua. Finally, after 60 years, more than that, Allah blesses him with the sun. Time is limited. I'm catching, cutting the incident short. What is the next command? Hijrat. Hijrat. Hajar. What was the age? 19, 20 years of age. New for more than 60 years of dua. The young wife. Ummi Madian was there, Sarah was there. Those were elderly wives. Ajuz and Aqeem. This is the expression found in the Quran. Yet Allah commands in the young wives such qurbani, such sacrifice. The bigger sacrifice. How that journey from Palestine, from Palestine to Makkah, Mukarramah was said with me. Take them where? Where must you leave them? was not shown beforehand. Jibreel was the guide. Until finally they come to Makkah Mukarramah. Not the Makkah Mukarramah of today. The Makkah Mukarramah of 4,000 years ago. That which Quran describes Wadin Ghayri Ni Zara. A land without vegetation. Black Arab mountains in every direction. Jabal Makkah, Jabal Safa, Safa, Jabal Marwa, Jabal Abi Qubais, Jabal Umar, whatever name it had at that time. Black Arab mountains, no vegetation, no water. And Allah commands, make hijrat. Hajar is left. Ismail, newborn baby, alayhi salam, is left. On the command of Allah, on the command of Allah, they say when you want to put up a big building, when you want to put up a big building, the foundation has to be deep. And the foundation, bigger building. Foundation was being planted of what? Why did Allah command this family to be separated like this? Foundation was being planted of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa From this progeny Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to be born. So huge qurbani was given on the foundation of hijrat. This was a sunnah of every Nabi of Allah. They made hijrat for the deen of Allah. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 10 years in Makkah Mukarramah Gali to Gali, Ali to Ali, 10 to 10 He worked amongst the tribes that came for Hajj Person to person One youngster says I stood on the mountain of Abu Qubais and I looked down at Mina And I saw this person going from person to person May you weeni, may you weeni who is there that will shelter me? Who is there that will become my harma for what? So that I can make the blade of this deen. So that I can convey this amanat. When Allah describes His beloved in the Quran, what does Allah say? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا This وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا This explains liberty. We have sent you as nothing. Nothing, nothing, illa but rahma as a mercy. For whom? Lil Muslimin, Lil Muwakhidin, Lil Muqinin? No, Lil Alameen. We have sent you as a mercy for every Alam. The legacy of His mercy had to perpetuate, had to rise above the boundaries of race, creed, color. Nationality, it had to transcend the boundaries of time also. May you we me, may you suruni, hatta well never risalat rabbi, who will become my helper, who will become my nasir to make the plague of this deed? From in whom man tafala fi waji, some of them spat in his face. Min whom man hatha ali hit to rob, some of them picked up sand, they flung it at him. Min whom man sabba ala waji, some of them swore at him, they scoffed him, they mocked him. They persecuted him relentlessly until the sun reached its zenith. He sat down exhausted. A young girl came running. Jariyatul Wadiyah, this expression is found in the Riwayat. Beautiful young girl. 
She sees her father in this dejected, humiliated state, body full of dust, exhausted, face emaciated. This is the predicament of her father. She doesn't know what to do. According to her understanding, she takes out a little handkerchief, sobbing and crying. She starts wiping his face with the handkerchief. This youngster, Allah Rasulullah addresses her and says, La takhshay ala abikil ghayla. Do not fear Allah will not disgrace your father. This youngster says, I turn to my father and I ask him, who is this person? My father said, that is Muhammad bin Abdullah. And the young girl is Zainab radiallahu anha, his daughter. Day in, day out like this, 10 years. Until finally in the 11th year of Nubuat, late one night, very close to where the big shaitan is situated today, in Mina, six youngsters from Yathrib, which later came to be known as Medina Murawara, Abul Haytham bin Tehan, Umada bin Sa'ad bin, Sa bin Rabi, As'ad bin Zurara, Abdullah bin Rawaha, and Raharita bin Nu'man, Ridwanullah yamun ajma'al alayhi anhum ajma'in. Six youngsters, late at night, Allah's Rasulullah Sallam meets them. He starts reciting Quran in front of them, the last two rukus of Surah Ibrahim. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجَنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامُ رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي فَإِنَّ بَلَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ فَاجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقْهُمْ مِّنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ The last two rukus are recited of Surah Ibrahim. Interestingly, what is recounted in these verses? The hijrah of Ibrahim al the hijrah of Ibrahim is recounted in these verses. The dua that he made, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadim ghayri di zarrin in the basic al -Muqarram. Until finally Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa reaches the, verse, the last verse of Surah Ibrahim. Hada balabun lin nas wal yunzaru bihi wal yalamu annama huwa ilahu wahid Great Mufassir, Rahmatullahi of the Quran, he says, the Quran has no name, but if I had to give it a name, it would be this expression, Hada Balahul Lin Nas. This Quran is the veil for humanity. It has to be conveyed to the entire humanity. Who will convey? Whose responsibility is it? This responsibility was handed over to this woman. Like I said, time is limited. I'm cutting the incident short. This is Islam. The next year, the persecution carried on against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi But his heart was light. Now the heart was light. Why the people of yesterday were coming? The people of yesterday were coming. Following year, 12 came. 13th year, 72 came. Two women, Umm Mani, Umm Ammara, with one line of Najmain, and 70 males. At that time, in Mina. In Aqaba, an oath of allegiance is taken. Before they take the oath of allegiance, Abbas bin Nadla radiallahu ta'ala who stands up and he addresses them and he says, Ya Mashal al Khazraj, Hal Tadruna Alama to Bayruna Hadar Rajul, to Bayruna Hu ala Harbil Ahmari wal Aswadi min al Nas. فَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَرَوْهُ أَنَّكُمْ وَافُونَ بِمَا دَعَوْتُمُهُ إِلَيْهِ عَلَى نَهْكَةِ الْأَمْوَالِ وَقَتْلِ الْأَشْرَابِ فَخُذُوهُ فَهُوَ اللَّهِ خَيْرُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَرَوْهُ أَنَّكُمْ إِذَا أُنْهِكَتْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ مُصِيبَةً وَأَشْرَابُكُمْ قَتْلَ أَسْلَمْتُمُهُ فَمِنَ الْآنِ فَهُوَ اللَّهِ خِزْيُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Cuts of what he said. He said, O people of Medina, I want to caution you, understand the ramifications of what you are doing. It is not a possibility, not a license. When you will accept the worry of Muhammad sallallahu when you will place your hand in the hand of this Nabi, then the whole world will turn against you. The whole world will turn against you. Your wives will become widows, your children will become orphans. You will become poor. Halal and conditions will come against you and ever of it. If you are not 
are prepared for this, then don't take this oath. If you are prepared for it, then only do so. I am cautioning you to the reality of what you are about to do. Like I said, I'm cutting the incident in short. Abu Haysan bin Tayhan, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhu. He turns to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, if what Abbas, he said, Dana anka Ya Abbas, Abbas, stop what you are doing, stop trying to dissuade us. Ya Rasulullah, you will come with us to Medina, we will stand with you. We will sacrifice for the deen of Allah, Allah will spread the wind of Hidayat. People will come into Islam, the legacy of your rahmat and mercy will reach the four corners of the world. Islam will spread far and wide. At that time, I have one question. What was his question? He says, Ya Rasulullah, when Islam spreads far and wide, will you leave us and come back to Mecca? Will you leave us and come back to Mecca? But it dam al dam wal hadam al hadam. He smiles and he says, My living will be with you and my dying will be with you. Once you will take this oath of allegiance and I will come to Medina Munawara, my cover will be in Medina Munawara. I will become with him, I will, Allah will probably say, Lawl al-Hijra, Lawl al-Hijra, Lakuntum ram min al-Ansari, if it was not for Hijrat, I also would have been an Ansari. When they hear this, also the other, Ya Rasulullah, stretch out your hand, and one by one, they took the oath of allegiance, that Amal, that seed, that foundation was what? Hijrat. And on that Hijrat, such was the brotherhood of Islam, Histories, repeat with incidents. Abdurrahman bin Oum comes to Medina. One of the first six Saad bin Rabi, the Islam says to him, this is your brother. This is your brother, what does he do? He addresses Abdurrahman bin Oum, Inni akhtar ahli al-Madina bi malan. I am the richest man in Medina. The Islam has said, you are my brother. Total stranger. Muakkad of Islam, brotherhood of Islam. Bondsmanship of Islam, today two brothers that have drunk bread milk from the breast of the same woman are not talking to one another. We are fighting because of some woman. Black brothers are not talking to one another. Where is the brotherhood of Islam? Where is the akhlaq and character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Where is the compassion and forgiveness of Islam? Look at this. Nabi Islam says, this is your brother. What does he say? I am the richest person in Medina. Half my wealth from today belongs to you, half belongs to you. I have two wives, I'm prepared to, you choose which one you want, I will divorce her, you get married to her. So I not like you and I, Abdurrahman bin says, no, no, not necessary. Just point me where's the marketplace. But, this was the, this was the time of Qurbani and sacrifice that was given. On the foundation of this hijrah, Sahaba of Mecca made hijrah, Ansar of Medina made Nusrat. And Allah says in the Quran, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Those who have gone ahead from amongst the مهاجرين and أنصار and the door was not closed upon them. والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان those that will follow them رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Allah is pleased with them. They will be pleased with them. We are not an ummah of rituals of occasion. New Year, there is a euphoric atmosphere around us. Recognize what is our New Year. What is our calendar? 4939, what? A-H after Hijrah. A reminder to this Ummah. This is an Ummah of sacrifice. This was the honor of every Nabi of Allah. Ayyul Imani Afdal Al-Hijrah. This is the pinnacle of Iman. We want Allah. We want the closeness of Allah. We have to come onto Qurbani and sacrifice. Make the day of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam our day. The night of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam our night. The fikr, cry, and concern of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam our fikr and concern. His legacy of rahmat, mercy, compassion upon humanity has to transcend till Qiyamah. This Ummah was made responsible. We are his representatives. We have to become the living embodiment of the expression of rahmat and mercy of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for this my respected brothers. Ishtimaz are taking place to remind us of that sabab which we forgot. Mufti Zainul Abidin Sahib Rahmatullahi one of our elders, Allah for his qabr with nur. There was an ishtimaz to take place. They asked him, Hazrat, who's ishtimaz is this? Who's ishtimaz? He says, my, my brother, the last person, the last person to come before Qiyamah, 
for that person to be saved from Jahannam and enter into Jannah, for the worry of that, this is Shemaiz. This worry, this concern, this legacy that each Ummati has received from Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is not an organization. Ishtima is what? 48 hours, some places, 72 hours, some places for what? To transport us back centuries to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To make us understand what the day of Madinah was, what the night of Madinah was, what the cry and fikr of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. For that, my respected brothers, time is very, very limited. Azan will be called out in one or two minutes. Very, very quickly, let us make the and attention. Who is ready, inshallah, from now, from the Ishtima, very shortly, to go four, four months in the path of Allah to learn our responsibility. Who makes intention? Shalom, bhai. Bismillah. Shalom, bhai. Very quickly, stand up, you brothers, inshallah. Allah is said, Taqabbal Allah, Barak Allah, MashaAllah. Allah give barakat in your life, in your wealth, in your progeny, MashaAllah. The standing up, this is not some commitment we are making, no, no legal repercussions. What we are standing up and doing, we are asking Allah, Ya Allah, accept my time in your heart. All make near, inshaAllah. Allah give us no Also very, very important, my respected brothers, our elders are exhorting us that we have to link and attach ourselves to the masjid. The amal of masjid, this is the protection of our iman. Rasulullah said, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ يَعْتَادُ الْمَسْجِدْ فَشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِالْإِمَانِ If you see people making the masjid abad, then give testimony they have iman. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَسْجِدْ abad who have iman upon Allah. Halat and conditions of Ummah is facing, we know. The protection of our Iman, the Iman of our families, the Iman of the entire Ummah is when this Ummah will link and attach itself to the, to the Masjid. Bring the Amal of Masjid alive. Our elders are telling us simple procedure to bring us onto this. They are saying daily our Mashwara that takes place, our Fikr. Daily Talib in the Masjid, Talib at home. Daily to give time to the Masjid, two and a half hours up to eight hours. Weekly our injol, our two Jolas and monthly three days in the path of Allah. All of us will try and do this inshallah. Thank you.